Welcome to High Ridge Church Online. Here at High Ridge, we are a family of churches, and our hope is to help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. We have a lot of things going on at High Ridge Church. The best way for you to get the details you need for every event or ministry is on highridgechurch.com or by downloading the High Ridge app from the App Store or Google Play. You can also connect with us on any of our various social media platforms. If you have never joined us at one of our weekend services, we would love to have you. You can find directions and service times for each of our campuses online at highridgechurch.com. We encourage you to lean in with anticipation for what God is going to speak into your life. Thank you for joining us online today. I want to share with you a couple things about mom. And uh, I, I think there's some, I want to interject some humor into some things today because I think we just, sometimes we just need a good laugh. So the definition of a mom is this, that they have photos in their wallet where there once was money. I, I think that's uh, pretty true in our household. Um, sometimes, you know, some of us have a face that only a mom could love. I, I say that I have a great face for radio. Um, so there, there are some stages of motherhood that, uh, th- th- and this is from a kid's perspective that I think is important. At age four, mom can do anything. At age 12, mom doesn't know anything. At age 14, mom really doesn't know anything. At age 18, mom is so out of step with everything. At age 25, mom knows a thing or two. At uh, age 35, let's get mom's opinion. At age 45, I wonder what mom would say about this. And sometimes at age 65, we say, I wish I could talk to my mom now. It's funny, you know, at Walmart not too long ago, and, and uh, there was uh, there was a mom and her little uh, little kid in the uh, in the in the cart, and the, and the kid was just screaming and screaming and screaming, and uh, so kept hearing, "Calm down, Ellen, please, calm, calm down. It's going to be okay, Ellen. It's almost over. We're about to go home, Ellen. It's okay." And so one of the the uh, Walmart workers came up to her and says, I'm so proud of you for, for just handling your daughter so well. And, and she's like, what, what, what are you talking about? I'm Ellen. I, I'm the one that's telling myself to calm down, not my kid. I'm, I'm like, I'm needing some help here. So I'm like t- telling myself, encouraging myself that I need, I need some help here, okay? Um, so th- these are just some wonderful Things that uh, I think we just need to step back and laugh about motherhood. There's a saying that, that goes like this. When God wants to do a good work, he gets a hold of a man. But when he wants to do an exceptional work, he gets a hold of a woman. And I think that's true for many of the women, especially in this room and watching online. Let's be real, though. Mama ain't easy. Ain't easy. Especially now, right? I think, the, I think the last two months have been a really a test of how much mom and ain't easy. There's a lot of things that, uh, that we've had to deal with that we didn't normally have to deal with. And, and, and sometimes we, uh, we just have to kind of take some deep breaths. Um, maybe, you know, we're in church, so I can't say have a glass of wine, but I, I, I guess I just did. Some, sometimes we, we, have to, we have to, you know, just kind of take a, a step back and, and just, just really, you know, reflect in the moment, be in the moment. But it's hard sometimes, and I, I know this because I've had many conversations with, with people over the last few months like, man, I feel like I'm totally failing as a parent. Like, I, I, I'm not being able to, to do the things that I need to do. I can't work and, and watch my children. I can't cook dinner every single night like I'm expected to. I, I'm, I'm having trouble with homework. I'm, I'm doing all these things that, that I'm not normally used to doing, and I'm, I'm just, it's just hard right now. And, and I, I'm, I just want you to know that I've been praying for you. 
because I know it hasn't been easy. Some of the, the, the most exceptional stories, though, in the Bible involve women. I don't know, I don't know if you know this or not. And, and I want to share just a few things with you just to, just to encourage you today. Because you're not alone in the struggle. You're not alone in your plight. You're not alone in your victories either. And so we're going to get to that in just a minute. But I want to share a story or just, just a few instances in the Bible. One is this. There was a woman named Sarah who wanted a child. And she had to wait until she was 90 years old before she could have a child. Rachel had a son that was sold to a foreign land. Jochebed had to give up her son for adoption to save his life. Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed for a son. And when God finally gave her a son, she gave him up. Over and over and over we see moms overcoming adversity. But yet at the same time of, of overcoming adversity, they, they were still found faithful in so many different ways and they were a blessing and I know some of you guys might think man how how are my kids right now my little hellions how are they a blessing right now because they're about to they're about to hop all over my last nerve right like they're just jumping all over it and and I need a break I, I need I need a I need a vacation I need a family vacation of just me Some of us can relate to that, I think. Sometimes we, we just get in this mode, we forget that our children are truly a blessing. That's why I love the song we just sang about the blessings of God and how the blessings of God are carried out through generations and generations. I mean, that's what a wonderful testament of motherhood that is. Psalm 127.3 says this, that the, our children are a gift from the Lord. And they're a reward from him. Even when it's hard, even when we're, we're at wit's end, even when, you know, dinner is, is two hours late, and even when we're having to have leftovers for the fifth time, or even when, when we're, we just feel like we're failing at homework, and, and since when did math all of a sudden have letters and, and the alphabet in it, and there's no actual numbers in it? Like, there, there's just a lot of things that we're having to deal with, but I just want to remind you that your children are a blessing, and the reason they're a blessing is because you are a blessing. You're a blessing to them. And so in moments like these, a lot of times we want to, we want to, we want to, we, we want to kick back and, and, and push back to our kids when they are hopping on our last nerve. And we want to remind them of what scripture says. And it says this in Ephesians 6. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Like, and of course, you know, no kid wants you throwing the Bible at them, right? Like, the Bible says that you're to obey me because it's right honor your father and your mother this is the first commandment with a promise and I love how it says that this may go well with you that you may have a long life on earth it's saying that hey if you don't obey me I will take you out because the Bible says so right here it's going to go well if you obey me and if you don't you're not going to have a very long life I promise you that Mama's going to take you out. Mama said, knock you out. Oh, wait. Proverbs 1 says this, listen, my son, to your father's instructions. Those are good. But don't forsake your mother's teaching. They're a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. It's like, don't forget, like, hey, I, I understand that dad's going to teach you some things about being a man, but mom is going to teach you some things that are way important for life. Let's not forget that as moms. That the things that you're instilling in your children right now are the things that are going to adorn them. They are, they're going to carry these things on for life. Hey, no pressure at all. 
how you act, how you react, all of those things, you know, kids tend to pick up on them. And then, then it's like, hey, why, why is my kid acting like that? <laughs> oh, well, it's because you act that way too. Whew. Okay. Second thing is this, that great moms don't go alone. I think in, in moments like these, you know, we, we, when moms are, are struggling and, and, and having a hard time, maybe, maybe there's some things, there's some uncertainty. You know, uh, here is, here is the, the thing that, that moms and women need the most is they need security. And a lot of times when they don't have maybe earthly security, they feel alone. And sometimes... As a parent, and I'm not singling out moms, but sometimes as a parent, parenting can be some of the loneliest things, situations that we'll ever face. Because a lot of the decisions that we have to make for life, for our children, we got to stand alone on those decisions. And sometimes they're hard decisions that we have to make. And it's lonely being a leader. But I want to encourage you today that you're not alone. You are not alone. You see, it says this in Deuteronomy 31. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or terrified because of them. I think it's funny it says because of them. We can say, don't be afraid or terrified because of your children. (laughs) Like, hey, don't, don't be afraid because, you know, I know that sometimes your kids can be a little terror and, and, and uh, you know, you, you're, you, you, gotta need, you need some courage along the way. The Lord is with you. He's with you in the decisions that you make. He's with you in how you discipline your children. He, he's with you in the wisdom that you are conveying to your children. He's with you when you don't even know what to say. You see, a lot of times, myself included, I I have faced things with even my own children. Like, I don't know, I don't know what to say in this moment. I don't know how to handle this. But every time I seek the Lord and I say, Lord, what is it that I need to do today? He is faithful to speak into my life and to speak into the situation. And he wants to do the same for you if you just submit to him. And ask him, hey, Lord, help me right now. I really really need some help. I'm at my rope's end right now. I I don't know how to face what I'm facing right now with my children. And he's faithful. He will never leave you or forsake you. And what a comfort that is for all of us. That even as we face strange things that are going on in our world today, he's still with us. And we're not alone. Even when we feel that way, he is, Scripture says that he is closer than a brother. And those are promises that I want to I cling to when I'm feeling alone. And maybe if you're feeling alone today, maybe you just need to say, Lord, help me. Feel your presence. Help me see you in the moment. And watch and wait and see what he will do. The third thing is this, that, and this is funny. God, godly moms pass the buck in a good way. A lot of times when we pass the buck, we're, we're, we're like blaming somebody else. And, and society has enough of that already. Like, you know, my, my children, you know, they're a product of the school. They're a product of society. They're a product of all these things. And, and it's, it's not my fault. It's not my fault the way they are. Sometimes we get in that mode, you know, like, hey, that, that, those are your children. They're not my children. You know, your, your son is acting like this. Not my. Sometimes we pass the buck, but there's, a, there's actually a good way to be able to pass the buck. And I love how we sang just a minute ago about the blessings of God. You see, when we pass on the blessing of God, this is how we actually pass the buck in a good way. You see, moms, you have the ability 
to pass on blessing upon blessing to your children. And not just to your children. When you bless your children, you're blessing your grandchildren and their children and their grandchildren. This is what I was, I love how we were singing this song because it really has a lot to do with you, mom. You see, moms, you, you have an ability to speak into your children that nobody else does, whether you realize it or not. Dads, yes, we, we have a, a, an ability to speak into our children, but moms, man, sometimes moms are the go-to. Somebody to cry on. Somebody to share our hurts. Somebody to encourage us. Somebody to go and get a better answer than dad. Anybody ever do that? Mom said this, but hey, dad, what do you say about that? Can we go? Can we do that? Can we ride four-wheelers without a helmet? Yeah, let's do that. Mom said no, but it's okay, right? (laughs) Passing the buck. How are you passing the buck to your children? Are you speaking life into them? Are you breathing godly wisdom into their life? See, there's power of life and death in our words. And many times our words, the things that we say to our children, are things that our children will cling to and hold on to for their entire life. They will shape, words will shape our children. And man, I, I, have, I have spoken to so many people that have, have taken words from mom, taken words from dad. And man, it has set them on a trajectory of death and destruction. And I have, I have spoken with other people that their parents have spoken life into them. And, and we see that, that, that they just begin to flourish And so my my challenge to you and to all the moms in here, speak life into your children. Speak blessings over them because the things that you speak into them today is what's going to carry them into the future. And these are the things that they are going to then speak into their children too. Pass the buck. Pass on the blessing. Don't pass on the curse. We, we've talked about in church of generational curses and things like that. Let's talk about generational blessings. There's so many more generational blessings that we can speak over our children instead of saying, man, you're never going to amount to anything. Man, that is speaking a curse over your child. Man, I wish you were smart. I wish you were smart like your brother. Things that we say off the cuff, things that we, we just flippantly say, we just kind of throw them, we just lob them out in the air, maybe even under our breath. Those are things that our children in the spirit pick up on and they take hold. And it begins to grow within them. And so as moms, I challenge you today to plant seeds of blessing that even the things that you just loft out there, the things that you say under your breath when they're maybe not even in the room about your kid, how your kid is driving you nuts and all these things, man, just begin to, to, to proclaim the goodness of God, begin to proclaim blessing over them and see what happens in their life. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says this. Now, therefore, that the Lord, your God, he is God, a faithful God who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to the thousandth generation with those who love him and keep his commandments. Think of the thousandth generation of your own life. What is that? Like, we we can't even imagine we haven't even reached the thousandth generation, I don't think, from the Old Testament times. I, don't, I don't, haven't done the math, but I don't think we're even there yet. And the things that you do and maybe even begin today 
will begin to reach into the thousandth generation of what's to come. No pressure. No pressure. The Lord is with you. And he's going to give you what you need. He's going to give you. He's already, he's already given you blessings. <laughs> he's already given you words. He's already given you wisdom. He's already given you strength. He's already given you, given you every resource of heaven. So now pass that on to your children. And see what God does. Sarah became the matriarch of the children of Israel after waiting so long to have a child. Rachel's son was Joseph, who became a great ruler in Egypt and helped his family through a famine. Jochebed's son was Moses, who led the nation of Israel out of slavery into the promised land. Hannah, the son, Hannah's son Samuel, anointed the greatest king in the Bible, King David. And probably the greatest, the greatest story is of a virgin named Mary who brought Jesus into the world. Exceptional stories of hardship, of loss, of just gut-wrenching pain. Yet they remained faithful. And God did something miraculous through their children. That's my prayer for you today. Is that whatever you're facing today, whatever gut-wrenching pain that you are going through right now with your children maybe God is going to do something miraculous through your pain and through your children will you pray with me today Father I thank you for stories of great women in the Bible I thank you for stories of your faithfulness I thank you for the mothers that are here and the blessing that it is to even be a mom. So, Father, I speak life into each one that is here. I speak, Lord, that your presence would be made known in their life. Lord, I, I pray that whatever circumstance that they're in right now, that they would see you and your power in them. That they would have the strength to carry on. That they would fear not. Because you're with them. And you'll never leave them or forsake them. So Lord, if there's somebody here today. Maybe that doesn't understand what it is to be in your presence. Maybe they don't understand what it is to surrender their life to you. I pray that today would be the day. I pray that today would be the day that they commit their life to the Lord. Commit their life to receive the blessings that you have for them today. God, we thank you so much for all the moms. There's a special place in all of our hearts for mom. And we just thank you for the gift that you've given us. And so, Lord, we say we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.